The M1 Ultra Max Studio is Apple's most powerful computer, but with the launch of the M2 Max MacBook Pros, that could have just changed, at least for a lot of you guys. Now, in this video, not only am I gonna compare this $3,500 MacBook to a $5,800 Mac Studio, but also the $4,000 model that is a lot more attainable for most people. We're gonna take a look at a ton of different real world tasks and see how this $3,500 MacBook compares to desktop computers that come with nothing but the computer itself. As you saw, this MacBook only has 32 gigs of RAM. That is half and even a quarter compared to the M1 Ultras. And some of these programs do use RAM. Now I'm gonna start out with Geekbench 6. This has just been updated. And in terms of single core performance, the M2 Max smashes the Ultras, which were already good. But in terms of multi-core, we have 15,200 compared to 17,300, so barely any difference. Now, when we take a look at graphics performance here, the MacBook gets almost 139,000. Now, the $4,000 M1 Ultra with 48 cores hits 129,000, yes, lower than the MacBook, which is crazy, while having 48 cores compared to 38. But the full-on 64 core gets 153,000 higher, but not by that much. Checking out GFX Bench for gaming performance, you would think that the MacBook would once again beat out the Mac Studio, but nope. We have 400 FPS compared to 416 and 485. So Geekbench has a wide variety of compute tasks where this is strictly gaming. Now, we also tested 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme, and here the MacBook gets 151 FPS compared to 175 and then 212. So we have an even broader range. So if you're somebody that cares about gaming, well, the Mac Studio is still faster, but I don't think there's a lot of you guys out there. Switching over to Blender, which is now using Metal for graphics performance, the BMW scene takes just 21 seconds on the MacBook. Looking at the studios, we have 37 seconds and 34 seconds. How is the MacBook beating it out for such a tough task? Well, these new M2 series chips, they have some major fixes in the way the hardware is designed that gives a lot more bandwidth. So unbelievably, the $5,800 Mac Studio gets beat out by a $3,500 laptop. Switching over to Party Tug, a lot harder here. Once again, the MacBook beats out the other two and it could do so on battery power, on the go, away from your desk, which is insane. Switching back to the CPUs using Cinebench, the MacBook scores 13,888. Now I'm gonna pause it right here because the M2 Pro in the Mac Mini actually scores 14,757. Now that just shows that the MacBook is throttled down a bit even when it's not thermal throttling. Now, let me show you the scores of the Mac Studios. They got 24,183. That right there is insane. It's not double the performance, but we are getting there. And that just shows what 20 cores being clocked pretty decently can do. But now, if you're not just rendering objects with the CPU, which you wouldn't, you would use graphics, let's take a look at programming using Xcode. Our MacBook took just 69 seconds, which is insanely fast, whereas the $500 more expensive Mac Studio took 72 seconds, and then the same 69 seconds for a $5,800 model. Can you believe spending that much money on a Mac Studio and it's just as quick as a laptop. And this MacBook is super fast for daily tasks and Speedometer 2.0, it scored 441 renders per minute, much faster than the Mac Studio. So it is quite nice. Now, if you do music production, we tested out Logic Pro with the new Logic Benchmark. You guys can check out the details. And here, the MacBook could handle 181 tracks, 
compared to 315 and 341 for the Mac Studio. Now this does have somewhat to do with uh, the amount of RAM that we had, but a lot more with the CPU threads and stability. So that is still better if you're gonna really push logic. Taking a look at photo editing using Lightroom Classic, you would think that the 20 core M1 Ultra with way more RAM would beat out the MacBook Pro. But with our standard test here, the MacBook took only 39 seconds. I wish I had a MacBook like this when I was doing professional wedding photography. The M1 Ultras took 45 seconds for both. Yes, slower and they have to be plugged in. That is absolutely crazy. Now looking at Photoshop, I created a high resolution HDR image here and the MacBook took a minute and 20 seconds compared to a minute and 22 on the Mac Studios. Once again, faster. Now, how is that possible? Well, because we're combining CPU, we're combining the RAM, the other changes that Apple has made and it's just incredibly fast. Now, a lot of people buy MacBooks for that and along with that, video editing because of Final Cut, because it's so optimized. So taking a look at video editing using Final Cut, the MacBook took a minute and 15 seconds to export our five minute HEVC graded project. That is very fast. Now you think the Mac Studio having 48 graphics cores or 64, and a lot of everything else, it'd be faster, but no, a minute and 17. So it is actually two seconds slower. And the reason why is because it's encoder limited um, and the encoders perform about the same. Now I also tested this out in DaVinci Resolve, which is actually better optimized than Final Cut now. Here, the MacBook took 45 seconds compared to 49, once again being faster. Now, th these projects, this is what most people edit with. Uh, it's very popular, it's compressed, but what if you do something a little bit tougher? For example, ProRes RAW to ProRes. This five minute project that was graded took just 43 seconds on the MacBook, 43 on the 48 core Mac Studio and 41 on the Ultra just being slightly faster. So because we have ProRes decoders and encoders built in, even a MacBook could be just as fast and that is absolutely insane. Now, the next test that I have is Red AK RAW. The Red AK RAW cannot use the ProRes encoders uh, or decoders. So here, the MacBook took five minutes and 40 seconds. That is a lot longer, and this really pushes the system, every single part of it. So you would think that the better benchmarking M1 Ultra would beat it out, but in the case of the 48 core, that took six minutes and 40 seconds, a whole minute longer, which is crazy. I was not expecting this at all. Now, if we boost up the graphics, now the highest end $5,800 one is faster than the MacBook, but by barely. It's a very small difference and that is just unbelievable. Now the RAM works really well. The other hardware optimizations, just like we saw in Blender, really help out with these high resolution files. Now the last actual encode here is Canon AK RAW, which we dubbed the Extreme Torture Test because it maxes out the CPU, it maxes out the graphics, it pushes everything to the extreme. And here the MacBook took six minutes and 41 seconds with the M1 Ultras taking 547 and 534. So here we are more CPU bound even though both are maxed out and we do see a difference, but still very little now that we have the M2 Max. And it's just incredible that you could do this portably on the go, unplugged from the wall. Now we do have a difference in fan noise and temperatures. The Mac Studio, they have really killer coolers when we took them apart. On the M1 Max, you have the aluminum, but the M1 Ultras come with copper heat sinks that are so heavy and large. And because of that, they stay silent all the time. The MacBook in the Canon 8K RAW test, the fans definitely spin up, it gets loud, and it hits 103 degrees for the CPU and really hot for the GPU, while the Mac Studios are at 69 and 68. Those stay silent and very cool. But with that, the MacBook is still barely behind the M1 Ultra Mac Studios. Now, apart from the performance, we also have some other differences. The Mac Studio has 10 gigabit Ethernet, which is really nice to have, and it has six 
Thunderbolt ports compared to three. But to be honest, three has never been limiting to me, especially now that we have MagSafe for charging, so you're not using up one of those, and we have an SD card reader built in, just like on the Mac Studio. And as far as internet speeds, you don't have that either in that plug, but the new M2 Max and the M2 Pros support Wi-Fi 6E. So I ended up upgrading my home system and even without using Wi-Fi 6E, just Wi-Fi 6, the MacBook hit 1,162 megabit per second compared to 741. Keep in mind, this is both on Wi-Fi 6. The actual chipset in here is much faster so even if you don't have 6E, you're gonna notice a difference, which is really sweet. And with that, of course, the Mac Studio is a desktop. So for $3,500 compared to $4,000 or $5,800, you are also getting a keyboard, a trackpad, a battery, uh, you're getting speakers, you're getting a webcam, you're getting a gorgeous mini LED, really bright HDR display. Whereas with the desktop, those are very expensive. So the value that is packed in here and being able to plug it into a desktop monitor to use as a desktop setup and being able to take it on the go, like right now when I'm traveling, it is absolutely amazing. So you guys let me know your thoughts. Would you replace a desktop computer with a, a notebook, particularly a MacBook, if you have a Mac Studio or gonna hold off for the Mac Pro whenever that comes out uh, or if you're gonna upgrade, would you want something that is dual purpose? I wanna hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section below. Go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those great videos right over there and I'll see you in the next one.